Hi and welcome to another OptiWave tutorial. In this video, we are going to look at how to properly use the MATLAB component to make a simple binary controlled switch. Depending on whether the binary input is 1 or 0, the optical signal will be routed to one of the two output ports. Pause the video now and take a look at the MATLAB code if you want a better understanding of how it works. The first thing we need to do is start a new project. Now let's think about what components we will need. The binary switch needs to have an optical source and a binary signal. So let's use a simple continuous wave laser source and a user-defined bit sequence generator. You'll find both of these components in the transmitters library. Of course, we still need the MATLAB component that will run the MATLAB program. You'll notice that the default number of inputs and outputs is 1. We will need to change these options in the component properties. Double-click the MATLAB component to bring out the properties box, then head to the inputs tab. Now we'll change the number of inputs from 1 to 2 and modify the second port to a binary signal. The next step is to increase the number of output ports to 2, and we'll keep them as optical signals. Now we need to provide MATLAB with the correct directory of our M file. Unless, of course, your chosen file is already in the default MATLAB search path. For example, I've saved my project in a folder on the desktop. Once the search path is correct, we still need to pass MATLAB its first command in the run command box. Technically, you could write your entire code here, but usually calling your pre-written MATLAB code is much preferable. So you can just write the name of your M file here. Now that all the options are correct, go ahead and accept the changes. Right away, you'll notice that we can hook up the sequence generator to the new input port. The default bit sequence length is much too large, so we'll change this by double-clicking on the layout and editing the length globally. Now let's take a look at the sequence generator. To demonstrate the functionality, I will choose a sequence that counts up from 1 to 4, with zeros separating each block. To avoid repeating the sequence, it is important to match the defined sequence length with the length we just set globally. To make sure that we have direct control over the sequence, I'm going to set the number of leading and trailing zeros to zero manually. Now let's accept these changes and we're almost done. Before we assimilate though, we still need to place two time domain visualizers so that we can confirm that the MATLAB component is functioning properly. Now we are ready to run the simulation. As the simulation runs, you should notice MATLAB being called and executing, and there should be no errors or warnings. Now let's verify the results of the simulation. The first output port should reflect the binary sequence exactly, while the second output signal is the binary inverse. I hope this simple example explains some of the basics of the MATLAB component, and thanks for watching. 